Well, welcome to everyone. This uh, it's morning here at wherever you are. Welcome uh, to our SIG HPC Education Chapter webinar. My name is Steve Gordon. I'm currently the chair of the SIG HPC Education Chapter. Uh, today we have uh, Julian Kunkel from the uh, University of Reading, who's going to talk to us about the HPC certification program. So, without further ado, uh, Julian, uh, don't forget to unmute, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Can you all see the screen? Yes, it's screen. Good. Good. Just want to make sure that it supposedly works. All right. Let me. So I've prepared a short presentation, so to speak, give you a little bit of demo. And I thought this is highly interactive. So if you have a question, um, kind of type it in. This is what I was told. And Steve would then kind of uh, post, paste it later to me. Uh, yeah, there is a chat function. So if you have questions, please post, post them there. And we'll try to collect them at the end of the presentation. Right. So um, I'm talking on behalf of the HPC certification forum, actually which you will learn in a minute what this is um, about. And first of all, what is the HPC certification program? It's the first part of the presentation, then the HPC certification forum, some conclusions and ongoing and future work. It's very important. And I'm really glad that so many of you have interest in this topic, such that we hopefully can grow um, the overall community and make this truly and remarkable effort, like many things that are done from the HPC uh, edu chapter. Okay, so the HPC certification program, first of all, some motivation, right? I mean, we all know that the users, in many cases, they, they often do not possess the right level of training when they run whatever experiment or on a supercomputer, on HPC or may even be on their own machines where they try to make the first baby steps of HPC. So that means overall, as a, from the perspective of a data center, I often see inefficient usage of the systems. That means some like wasted resources, for example. And from the user, we have frustration, which overall I think means lost potential. And we know that good training, we can save compute time and costs overall. However, from the perspective of the user, and I consider myself often as being a user as well, uh, it's not easy to learn the right skills for the tasks at hand. First of all, you have to understand, I have my task, whatever my task is, now I have to understand what skill set are required on this particular data center. And a lot of data centers, things are handled a bit differently, so you may need a slightly different skill set depending on the data center you connect. And when we look at the teaching offered, so I, as a user, right, I come from one data center, maybe I, I took a, a course, let's say about Slurm. And so now I understand what is a, a batch scheduling and what is it doing. I go to a different data center. They may also have Slurm, but they offer a different course, slightly different, but I may think, oh, now I know everything about Slurm. So why should I attend this one? And actually what I later find out is that there was really important site-specific information taught in this course, which I actually now miss. So it's really complicated, I find it, to learn you know, what kind of skill, what is the new things that I learned from this course compared to what I have already, what I would call as a skill set, as a knowledge. So, and finally, as a data center perspective, it's really difficult, I think, to know what skills do my users have how can I educate them further? How can we bring the right level of training to them such that they can be more successful with the task on the long run? Being more successful for me, saving potentially costs overall. When I say costs, right, I, I mean, I, I say this quite some time. For me, it's not that we try to um, kind of an associate costs with the scientific output or something like that. For me, it's more like, we have certain budget available to do science, and of course we want to do the best out of it. That's um, what I, how I mean costs. Right, so what is the HPC certification program? The goals are to standardize the HPC knowledge representation. Particularly we talk about practitioner skills. I'm not talking about 
skills in theory how to do CFD or whatever, um, you know, HPC programming in detail. It's more really about the practical aspects of dealing with supercomputers, getting things to work as a user. So, and once we kind of have standardized this representation, we want to support the navigation as a user to say, oh, these are the skills. Oh, this is my skill set. And what would be beneficial for me on this particular task for this particular data center, for instance. And this ties into this role specific knowledge maps, right? It's not that we have like a, a, a serial curriculum where you say, first you have to learn this and first, second you have to learn that. That's not how scientists, I would say, uh, perceive the world often. So it would be really difficult for them to grab that. It's more like a puzzle that we have where we have many different puzzle pieces. And for a particular role or task we have, want at, have at hand, we need certain puzzle pieces, right? And so we kind of classify each puzzle piece, so to say. And once this is done, we want that the users actually, they are recognized for what skills they have. So we want to establish international certificates that attest them their knowledge. And just to mention this work that I present you, this has been bootstrapped and is supported by a project, a, a Germany funded project, um, where, we in, where I kind of <coughs> initially had some thoughts, put that in. We as a consortium agreed um, to do this on a national level, but quickly it became clear that this is you know, truly relevant for, on a global um, scale. Just to say, what did we contribute by the PICU project, which by the way stands for Performance Conscious HPC? What we did in the past was that we had an initial classification of competences, which I call normally skills, and we developed an initial idea for a certification program. However, at some point, right, we can't stop with the project. We have to think about the long-term perspective. And so that adds this idea of this HPC certification forum, which now takes over what has been produced by this PICO project and kind of is an international effort to curate those kind of um, competences and the program. So that means the PICO project is not longer in charge to make, so to speak, decisions. It's like a fork, so to say, on GitHub, as you will see. And however, we still expect certain contributions from the project, like a workshop material that we can do a basic certificate level, and like online tutorials for basic certificates to some extent. And finally, a strategy to do online examinations for which allows us to do this kind of certificates. By the way, can you see my mouse? Gordon? Yes. Yeah. Good, thank you. Just want to make sure. Okay, so that leaves this behind. Now let's talk a bit about what is part of this certification program. So we have, normally we talk, I talk about skills a lot. So we have a, a skill tree that has different root skills, like performance engineering at the moment, software development, HPC knowledge, more theoretic part, and the use of HPC environment. And all of these, top level skills, so to speak, um, or each of these skills that you see has a unique key. It describes the knowledge covered on a very constrained level. But the more we go towards leaves, and there are more leaves that I didn't show here, because the tree is actually quite huge, um, we would see what does it mean. It would describe what knowledge do we want to have in this particular role in general. And the skill tree just is a way to organize these competences in a meaningful way. And actually we can have links between the different branches, like this, for example, the use of HPC environment certainly has certain elementary skills that come from HPC knowledge, for example. And the certificates, they are easy, at the moment easily defined by this, such a sense that we just bundle a couple of skills and say, this is now a certificate we would issue. Like, um, yeah, for example, a very basic certificate could be the use of a cluster each operating system combined with something from here, like job scheduling, a bit about supercomputers, a bit about performance modeling. The reason why we decided to bundle um, skills into certificates is that um, we want to have a, a testable and, um, so to say, um, examinable um, unit 
while this tree on the leaves is very fine grained. Okay, but this is very easy, so to speak, to change these mappings between certificates to skills. And we haven't done so much yet with the certificates, right? They're still in the process of kind of um, getting, as I said here, this online examination working, and that will be then the first certificates. Right, um, a very important part that actually took me quite a while to uh, convince some of the partners was that we say, this is really a theoretic definition and classification of the skills. It does not con describe anything how we actually um, deliver the content. So delivery methods and the actual content is not part of the certification program. So it's really part of something what we call content providers. But however, at the same time, we are really willing to link good content on our page. And the idea is in the long term, I can see that there is a really a huge um, ecosystem that builds upon an independent created, let's say certification and skill tree. And then you have like a vendor that says, oh, I deliver a really a great um, skill set and I have really great teachers to teach you everything of it, but it comes as a cost with a certain cost, right? So users may choose to do that and they get a really good experience, learn things, then they can go here hopefully and get the certificates, which we proved that the users may have it. But at the same time, we have this industry of, you know, teachers and the teachers can refer to this material that we have here. Likewise, data centers, they could brand, you know, the material that they probably already have and they can say, oh, I have this stuff for Slurm here and this delivers skill um, K, 4.3.2, for example, but also it covers the parts of this and this skill. So as a user, I just look at the beginning of the training material and for me, it's clear what it is. And the idea, the core idea, I think um, stems from the idea that um, in school, right, we have often this curriculum that tells us what do you have to do in year one, year two, and year three. And then the books or whatever training material has to be chosen is orthogonal. So someone defines this is really good to have for his students and this is maybe in order to learn things and someone else decides um, how to deliver this content and train students. Right here we go even a bit further because we have this kind of puzzle piece of things. We don't tell people you have to learn first this and this trade for supercomputers or something. We just say this certificate, for example, as a beginner certificate, could you could call it, um, you know, you should have learned for example, to run a first application on a supercomputer and understand certain base principles that stem from different parts or leaves of this tree. All right. So let me give you an example of a high level skill. This is a hardware architectures, which is in under knowledge 1.2. So supercomputers and then I've Beyond supercomputers, we have something which is hardware architectures, and we have a subskill which is called a basic level. So we can have different levels, like a basic one, and an intermediate one, an expert one. You could imagine there is one that is called an admin one that trains you actually not as a user, but from the perspective of an administrator. So this one has a level basic, and it's in the category HPC knowledge. And then we have some keywords like phrases, what people have to learn, right? You should learn something about elementary processing elements, something like vector system and FPGAs. So this is part of this, like NUMA architecture, networking for HPC systems, and typical network architectures in HPC systems. This is just an example, right? I'm not saying, and per certainly what we have now is a version of, I would say 0 0.5. To make this truly um, a great effort, we have to still incorporate a lot of feedback that we um, receive and kind of make sure that the forum takes this leading role to classify those things. Skills. Right, um, yes, I said maybe HPC skills, they are generally built upon one or, of the, or the other. So we have these generic topic like HPC knowledge. What do we mean by that? What is HPC knowledge? What is hardware knowledge? What is the definition of that? What does it cover? And then you, the more you go towards the leaves, the more specific it gets, right? So 
we can have these references to the skills. Technically, at the moment, we have realized the skill tree as an XML. More about this later. Um, and we have a schema, of course, to ensure the consistency. And you can use additional attributes for, for the different skills, like this basic, intermediate, and expert, and certain user roles, like tester, builder, and developer. But this is something where we actually work on to kind of outsource them, because they are orthogonal aspects. And another aspect is the scientific domain. So I can certainly see the different scientific domains, they have different need for different skills. While they are mostly similar, some of them may use certain other knowledge, for example, particularly when it deals with software engineering. And how we actually want to handle that is what you see in a second, is that we have different views on the content. Okay, let me show you uh, if I manage to get this up here. This is now, um, I will make it a bit larger, uh, but then unfortunately it kind of breaks. I hope, hopefully you can see it. This is now a uh, JavaScript pre presentation of the current skill tree, or one version of the skill tree. And when I hover over it, I get some basic information, what it is exactly we can reconfigure. And you can expand these nodes. Like I can go to supercomputers. In supercomputers, I have hardware architectures. Yeah, and then I you know, see some basic information about this and you can i can imagine or actually we have a version of this where the user can download this javascript presentation a data center could do that for example and they create their own derived skill tree by coloring for example certain nodes they find not important for their task at hand which is a way of customizing it and likewise the content that you see now in these boxes it can also be adjusted so that we can add, uh, for example, oh, I use the same visualization. That's the key part, right? Because we want to standardize a bit on the visualization. I'm not saying this is the last version, so to speak. But let's standardize on the visualization to one way or the other. And now a data center says, instead of a description of what it is, I tell you, ah, I have this course that I offer in the summer term, or I have this teaching material, and I provide all the links inside here. So as a user, it's now, once I understood this kind of tree, then I can go to different data centers in the future, hopefully. I go to their page and I see, oh, what do, what do they offer in terms of hardware architectures as a training material? I see I have some lack of knowledge in there. I go there and I see the material, right? So this is kind of an ecosystem that I, I'm talking about. I really think this is, or at least this is my thought, that this is, would be really great to have. Um, also, we have not only this JavaScript version, but we have stuff like in FreeMind, you can export because it's XML, we can export a tree to FreeMind, where we can do similar things and export different versions of the tree, which has annotations or not. So I really think we have some kind of tools, right? We have, we have this to represent and navigate and make this knowledge as a wisdom from all those HPC experts more perceivable, more navigatable. That's kind of the overall idea, right? So let's go back to my presentation. Right, um, so we have the first version of the steel tree release, which has 35 basic skills at this XML, and it's available on GitHub. And at the moment, the build process is a bit, um, because it uses a lot of XML transformation, it takes is a bit slow, but we are working on that. And we, I showed you this JavaScript for visualization of the skill tree, and this can be embedded in the web page and adapted for this role-specific knowledge, like a data center could download it. I even imagine, right? Imagine you have a software. Um, let's take uh, like Open Foam, right? And on the Open Foam web page, you would see. Oh, you want to become a developer on this subset of open form. Here, by the way, is we use this in this technique, but here's the skill tree, what we would expect from a developer. You know, it's very easy, you know, to grab then or understand once we understood the skill tree and we use this a lot 
it's really easy for users, right? Instead of writing all the time, but you have to know how to use Slurm and particular this sub command or what have you, which may be really hard sometimes. And I think really this adds to the question, how do we present knowledge and uh, what should people know to effectively work in your environment, right? Or the environment of a data center in the software, whatever. Right, and I would find it's really great, even if I have a PhD student, potentially, and I say, you know, here we want to offer you um, this PhD topic about, let's call it open form, but I expect this thing as a skill set. And as long as you have most of these things covered, come to me. Right, it's much easier than even in an application, than people write something, oh, I know Slurm. Then you have to think about, did they use the right term? in their application to a, to a job, or what is this? They can rather write, I have these and these skills, right? And at some point you just put them in back into the map and you see what skills that this user has and you can compare it with this, your needs and then you find the best applicant. That's kind of, I think, cool. I, I consider this cool um, in such an environment. Generally, this was um, quite, so we have been working on this project now for what, two years? Generally, the project covers more than just this HPC skills, obviously, but um, we had undergone quite some transformation and a lot of discussions. So for example, what is the granularity of the skills? So if it's too fine, like um, you would call the move command for bash, or the moved command line tool, this would be very fine grained. If it's too coarse, it helps not you, it doesn't help you to structure, to structure the material. For example, there are other companies like Red Hat that offer you a certificate, but there is like three top level certificates. You can be administrator, you can be this or that, which is like you have to learn tons of things, which is kind of what we never can expect from our users. I can expect from the user to say, Okay, you can learn the skill basic navigation in basic um, navigation in Linux. And this is a unit which we can, then came up to say, you can learn this in 90 minutes, for example. Right, 90 minutes is a good way of delivering content. Once it's beyond 90 minutes, you will probably accumulate it into a skill. Right, you shouldn't have like something that you can learn in two minutes, like move or five minutes and you make it too detailed. I would rather um, kind of combine things such that it can be delivered in one lecture, for example. 45 minutes might be even okay, but 90 minutes is, is probably also a good target. Right, and the users, they immediately get the benefit, right? You go to a training, to a data center, and you get this basic navigation in Linux, let's say 90 minute delivery. Oh, now I get, can tell you got the skill, great. Come to, come to two more of our um, offered kind of things and you can get a certificate that you, for example, can do um, basic um, HPC uh, stuff, so to speak. Right, um, the certificate definition, as I said before, it bundles the skills and we have to certify them by a successful exam. I'm not going to details except if people ask me, there is a lot of things that can be discussed about cheating here, right? But I think this is true, whatever we do, even in school with modern technology, you can cheat everything. And I think um, we'll see how that grows. And I think a key part was that we kind of uh, separated the concerns of skills, which is kind of the um, competences from the certificates, the content provided, and the way of delivering like a curriculum. I could totally agree if someone says, even at a university, so I will deliver you um, HPC lecture. And by the way, when you do this lecture, at the same time, you, you get certain skills that allow you to get in this HPC certification program some certificates. That would be a nice trade for and, and kind of motivating for the users, I, I believe. Right. And uh, the teachers, we actually will. We, are, we have provided some kind of um, seal, so to speak, that you can put on the material, like a badge or whatever. So you could say slide on, on the top level slide, this material trains 
competence X, Y, and Z, which, you know, we kind of help the people to put on top. So we provide kind of the seal and people can put this on top of their stuff themselves. And I really think that the flexible usage of whatever such a competence classification is, is really the key, right? Because it allows these institutions to derive the skill trees with their own groups. Like we had this use case for weather and climate users for a single program or roles like testers, right? What do we expect from them? And we have, at the moment, we have realized that with JavaScript and JSON config files, but at the moment, of course, I would expect that we get more different uh, representations in the long run. So next is the HPC certification forum. Um, so it is the central authority for the development of the program. Ultimately, an independent international body that is organized into a steering board full members with voting rights and associate members. So in a nutshell, everyone can become a member, but only when you contribute something, you become a full member and have voting rights, right? Otherwise, you know, everyone that has not even contributed would tell us how to proceed, which is a bit awkward in terms of voting. So the responsibilities is the curating and maintaining of the skill tree and the certificates. And secondly, to provide these tools and the ecosystem around the competences. Like I said, this JavaScript tool, for example, and this XML tree. So how do we do governance? At the moment, we have an initial set of government rules where we split the responsibilities across different roles. And at the moment, I'm actually the program chair, have been um, assigned by the other members. And we have a, a, a chair for dealing with the curriculum, you know, when you do kind of merge pull requests to the changes of the curriculum. And then in, within the curriculum, we have for these four topics that we, I have outlined, like HPC knowledge, performance engineering, and the use of HPC environment, we have found different people that kind of are now the owners, so to speak, of those um, or maintainers of those branches. And they make these minor changes and then they would kind of together with the curriculum chair merge them back, so to speak. So minor changes are dealt by them. And at the moment, you do not have anyone for software development. Hopefully someone comes. But just to mention, so we have someone from industry and we have people, you know, from Germany, um, UK, and actually from Australia. So I think there is, um, it is truly an international activity right and uh, actually we have also the first people that said oh i want to write um a master thesis or something about this topic how this could influence teaching or, or how we could structure things better i find it really nice and was surprised to hear that because it's just like half a year ago when we announced this initial international activity and we have a publication chair publicity chair and we have an examination chair, but this one is not seated this year because we do not do examinations yet, but it will be seated. Right, at some point, certainly we need someone, a, a web master. At the moment, it's a bit rudimentary what we have as a web page, but it will, surely will grow at some point. Oh yes, and this is kind of the official um, logo for the HPC certification forum. And in short, it's HPC CF as an abbreviation. Okay, what else to conclude? So the expected benefits generated, we, we as a team kind of thought is um, that we increase the motivation of the users to participate because they get a reward, they get the certificates that you can actually put into your CV and people no longer would ask, if you say SLURM, you know SLURM. What do you mean by that? You would say, I have this certificate and this actually attests you this and this. This is really, I think, a key benefit for users to be, to like, for some users to like those things. And we would validate knowledge via tests. At the moment, we would do online examination, multiple choice. This is what we have on the agenda. Um, we allow this browsing and navigation of the competences which simplifies to find out what should you learn next. 
And if this ecosystem kind of works, ultimately users and data centers or software owners, so to speak, that have a certain software and data centers, they would publish required skill sets for certain tasks. And it would also help to understand and compare the teaching offers across sites, which I think is not only a benefit for the HPC practitioners, but also for the data centers, in fact, because it increases the sharing of teaching material, right? I've seen so many teaching material like Slurm or whatever, and everyone says, oh, we need our own introductory sled. Can't we share? And this is, as all data centers have the same problems with a short number of stuff, typically, I think this is a key piece that would be um, kind of fueled by such an activity. And it simplifies the documentation of the skills we teach because I can just say this skill K1.2, skill K1.3, and skill K1.3 partially, whatever that means. And it identifies missing teaching activities, right? If I see as a data center, I offer just these pieces, but at the same time, users have certain problems, well, I lack certain skills that I teach, right? And I can identify those uh, missing pieces and add them. I can tailor the skill representation to users, which is pretty nice. And I can, I find this a really long-term strategic plan. What can we do with that is that we can correlate a certain lack of skills with the efficient use of the data center. Not in the sense that we want to blame users, but in the sense that we would say, oh, you know, you repeatedly make this and this mistake. And in, in the, in, we see in your user profile, you lack the skill uh, K1.3 slurm, I don't know, details. Maybe you should go to a training because, not because we think you are, you know, crazy, but because statistics have shown that users that take this training they will be 50% faster doing the job that you try to do. Imagine, you know, how much time that saves for you. I think, you know, we can do machine learning and all those fancy things on top of once you get at that. Of course, there is a longer term discussion of, about privacy that we could help on this. Um, but certainly I see as a user, right, I would see the benefit because I want to know how I can improve and be more efficient in the tasks that I have to produce ultimately more science. And as a role, as a user, my role is to produce science and not to use a supercomputer, right? So that's why I, I put this. So to wrap that up, um, so it's an effort, the HPC certification program is an effort to standardize the representation of relevant HPC skills. We have the hierarchical definition of skills for practitioners. And we kind of believe this is like a building blocks or a puzzle that you can cherry pick the skills to different tasks. Certainly our goal is not to provide the content or, any or define any linear or whatever type of curriculum. This is out of scope and should be treated by the individual stakeholders as it is right now. And for the data centers, I think we have this benefit that at some point we could actually make it mandatory for users to say, if you want to run a job, that it takes more than 100 nodes, you have to have, to have to sh show me that you have these basic skills, this certificate, for example, right? Because we, have, we know if you have that, it will make you happier and us, so to speak, right? At the moment, there exists nothing like that, I think, directly. And finally, we could use statistics and machine learning, you know, to help the users to find the right skills and actually open the door for more, um, even it's something like a personalized training, right? If, if you have 90 minutes time, so to speak, what should I do now, I may ask as a user. And then you put in what you have done as a tasks so far on the supercomputer and the system will tell you, oh, if you, maybe you should try this skill to learn. And then you find out, yes, this is offered by my local nearby data center, why, why not go there, right? So I can add something to my CV. Yes, this customizable nav navigation for the data centers with this interactive viewer. I mean, it always needs to be a bit more improved, but we are working on that. And finally, um, feel free to visit our webpage. This is, you know, kind of up here. 
hpc-certification.org. We actually offer on supercomputing, at supercomputing, a birds of a feather session um, where we add, have a mo more diversity of, of speakers actually and uh, where we really want to engage with the people to actually get this um, running. What else? Oh yes, what are next steps? We work that we get this first version of the skill tree done, which we could then release. And of course, there will be later versions. Nothing has to be perfect in the version one. Then we would release the seal that can be added to the training material. We already um, con collaborate here with the, some, the Gauss Alliance from Germany, which is multiple, it's like a German, you can say, non profit organization that covers a lot of actually the HPC environment in, in Germany. Then we final, I are currently finalizing the documentation how to create these views with the JavaScript that you can outsource the roles like tester, but and also link to your own material. This is just in large steps. Then we kind of create a markdown version of the skill tree because the skill tree in this XML is a bit non-accessible as for humans. It's very accessible for the machines. Mm. And once we have that, we actually embed this version into a wiki kind of style that can be edited by um, members. Not saying every change that is made there is directly reflected in the skill tree, but it would then go to a Git version control system such that we can you know, kind of cherry pick good features and discuss it. And finally, you know, we work on this workshop material and online certification of base courses, right? Really this like a starter set. It's like a um, driving license, so to speak, that several um, data centers in Germany would be pleased if you have this kind of driving license that you could give to a PhD student. They do a couple of courses and then we can attest them, yes, you have understood what the HPC a data center does what a HPC system looks like, and you can actually log in and do something useful. And as I mentioned, you know, cheating has been a very long discussion, but actually, I wouldn't want to focus on that. And that kind of concludes um, my talk. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm looking forward to get all your great comments, comments, and any further suggestions is welcome. And join us, work with us. We really try to get every, everyone on board on that. Thanks. Thank you, Julian. That was a very uh, comprehensive presentation. So now uh, we're open to questions and either you can um, unmute and ask it verbally or you can post something in the group chat uh, and I'll pass that on to Julian to answer the questions. Julian, when, you, um, when you're done, if you can also send me uh, uh, version of the slides, I'll post it along with the video of the session. Okay, cool, of course I will. So questions from the audience. So a, anyone thinks this is a bad idea or it's a good idea would be also fair enough, right? No reaction is, any reaction is good. Martin Callaghan, go ahead, please. Hello there, Julian. Um, so sorry I joined a little bit late. That was um, a really useful presentation. Um, thanks for that. Some, um, some quite exciting stuff going on there. Um, just a question for you, really. How do you see this um, fitting in with some of the other initiatives, like, say, HPC Carpentry um, and that type, yes. of, that type of work? Very well, yes. So indeed, we did look at other initiatives. and. There are many going on, and I really see this as an orthogonal aspect, right? So we classify, if we manage to classify all this knowledge, and someone else comes that has a good idea to make like a curriculum out of it, they can use this classification, right? For instance. So it's yeah. really orthogonal. I, I don't see um, yet how this conflicts or has a negative impact, let's say, on HPC carpentry. No. I think from what, from what you said, I think you, you more or less answered that question, that you're not, you're not really trying to define a curriculum. You're trying yes. to define, define a sort of a matrix of skills that people can help build a curriculum around. So you're right, they, they would be very, very complementary. Uh, no, that's cool. Thanks very much. Cheers. <clears throat> There's another question. Um, is uh, 
<clears throat> is teaching how to compile open source packages included in your curriculum? That, yes, it actually should be around there, albeit even since it's just, just 30 parts, uh, 34 um, skills, I'm not always sure <laughs> if everything is covered. You know, we discussed about so many things. Uh -huh. And we have the, you know, when we make this initial decision, what is HPC knowledge? What is um, the use of HPC environments? And what is software engineering, right? So there is a certain part, like software engineering, a lot of people, they are just really end users, so to speak. They never will compile anything. Hence, this branch here, like software engineering, is totally irrelevant. So they wouldn't even look at this, right? They may be interested in performance engineering to some extent, but not in other pieces. Now, in the, H in the, use, of the use of HPC environment, this is the point where we had initially, and actually we had the way of compiling software. And we have here, for example, in the software engineering part, still the software engineering piece, how, how to do the configuration management. But somehow in the latest version of the skill tree, it has been lost. So I have to re-add it again. But essentially, yes, it should be here because using of the HPC environment, that is, so to speak, for, for one of the roles that is closer to, to people like tester, the role of a tester, certainly it is you run existing software on it, so you have to compile it. So it should be part, oh, actually it is part. Oh, running of parallel programs, um, we, let me, and building of parallel programs, it's here, as you see. So it's in the problem when I make it bigger. So building of parallel programs, yes. See, I, I, I was thinking, it, I was, we dropped it accidentally, but it's still there, yes. Okay, so it's under the use section, That's, that was one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But, <laughs> But not saying, right, as I said, I'm 100% sure. I mean, this thing has been gone through, let's say, 10 people, so to speak, and it's not final, right? So we have to go to more people and make sure everything is really covered. Then I'm more confident with such questions. Sure, sure. <clears throat> Other questions? Okay. Well, thank you again, uh, Julian. Uh, yes. Let me just show maybe um, if you go on the start page, right, you would see the webinar is linked here. And we have also the Birds of a Special Session at Supercomputing. So if you go on our initial page, you would find that one. And then you get all the details, what we do, where we have the different um, slides. Of course, you know now already quite a lot of what we will cover in this session, but still you have the chance to talk to more of, of the stuff. And if you want to contribute, right, we have this mailing list, go here to um, participate. And then we have a Slack channel where you can actually join. We have a mailing list. You just, you know, go there, register, make sure you kind of confirm the initial subscription and then you are enrolled and we normally post emails, you know, to the members and the news one, we rarely post anything actually. Um, so it's really low traffic. We have monthly, normally monthly phone calls um, that we do a bit difficult to join for US participants, right? but we have to make them. So it's at like 9.30 um, British time. And you know, if you contribute, we put your logo up here, for example, and at some point we name all the people on this page once the list is so big that people will be more impressed and actually everyone wants to join. <laughs> anyway, so that's advertisement. Okay. Well, thank you again. And uh, Thanks. Uh, we look forward to the development of this a little bit further in the future as it matures. So thank all of you for joining us today. And uh, I want to remind you that we have another webinar coming up shortly on November 5th where uh, people from uh, Morgan State University are going to review uh, their efforts to integrate uh, computational science and into their, uh, into their undergraduate curriculum. So uh, that's posted on our website, sigitpceducation.acm.org. 
and hope to see some of you there on Monday. So with that, we'll close this session and thank you again. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.